What's going on YouTube? Welcome to another video. Today we're talking about recruiters. I've mainly had not so positive experiences with recruiters, but I know people who have. We're going to talk about what recruiters are, why they do what they do, how they do what they do, and if you're interested, maybe you can find some recruiters that, that work for you. Uh, let me just tell you my experience with recruiters so far. I've worked with recruiters two significant times. Um, the one right after I had my PHP job, they came to me and I went to them and then they took me to lunch and kind of, you know, buttered me up for this job and they wanted me to go to a job that was like an hour away and they told me it was like 20 minutes and I was like, maybe if you leave at like 2.30 in the morning, but any other time of the day when you're working or need to commute in the mornings, it's going to be like an hour. And they're like, no, 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 don't worry about it. But when you don't have a job, a job is a job, so you take what you can get. However, I did have two offers on the table that were headed my way and so I knew that they were coming and they were setting up the interviews fast with me. You know, they, they set me up, they gave me a call with the CTO and all that stuff, but I really wanted those two other offers to come in and then like the day of I was supposed to go to the interview, I just, I just kind of like ghosted them and I, you know, I told them it wasn't going to work out and they were really upset, right? So recruiters are really pushy. They're kind of like your classic car salesman and uh, they get paid when you get placed, right? So they're just going to throw stuff at a wall. I don't know if we're... I don't know how familiar you guys are with this, but if you, for me, on LinkedIn, I get a whole lot of what I call recruiter spam. They send me emails about like everything, things that I've never even heard of. They're like, looking for Arduino developer, senior level. I'm like, wait, what? Or they're like, looking for C++ developer based in the San Francisco area. And like in the summary, it says like, preferred remote positions something about React and JavaScript or something like that. But they just throw everything they can at the wall and see what sticks because they get paid when you get hired. So this is how it normally works. It's six month contract to hire. I don't know if you've ever heard of like contract to hire. But so contract to hire means they hire you for six months. But during that six months, you're working for the contractor company. You're not actually working for the company that you're working at um, pretty much. So. You're working for the contractor. The, the company is paying the contractor to see if you're a good fit. So the contracting or the recruiting company is paying you $70,000 a year, but they're charging the company $95,000 a year and they're just scraping that off the top of your salary. That's how recruiters work. Or they get a base commission of like a jackpot or reward when they place a person there. So that's why they're so, you know, they'll push anyone that they can into a position and see if they can get hired. Two weeks or 30 days to decide if that there's not a fit at all and then the recruiter has to give the money back, so it's like a money back guarantee refund, except you're a human being. And you know, that just feels really weird to me. And anyways, I, I ghosted them and you know, I just I know that they want their money, and so I don't really feel like they actually care about what I want. You can be like, any preferences that you have, uh, you know, what kind of, you know, anything that you want to look for? Like they don't actually care. I don't know why they ask the questions that they do, because they don't ever place you into anything that you prefer. At least that's been in my experience with like four or five different recruiters now. They, they ask you the questions, but they're just going to give you the jobs that they have clients for. They want you to give like a higher salary than you're comfortable with. They did that to me a couple times. They're like, why don't you ask for this, right? Because the more money you make, the more money they make. I don't know. The whole thing just feels kind of sleazy to me. And I don't really, I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, the second time I worked with a recruiter was after me and Katie and Taylor and all of us were working at our last like government job and then the government job, the government put all the budget, uh, the government put the budget for all the contracts on hold and they told us, yeah, sorry, we can't pay you. Like the company was like, well, if the government's not giving us money to pay you, we can't pay you, therefore, goodbye. And so we all got laid off and then I, <laughs> I tried working with a recruiter again and I did a normal phone interview like for the recruiting company. So they have like dedicated recruiting companies. So basically you become like a dev shop um, or they place you so they do everything they'll place you take their commission they'll do six months of the contract three months of the contract take their c commission At the end of the contract that is when the company can either decide yeah he was a great fit yeah we'll hire him on full time then you become an actual employee of that company um, or they'll say yeah yeah he's not a good fit it didn't work out you can have him back and so either at that point the company the 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 recruiting agency can choose to hire you on as a full-time employee if they offer that program or you're out of luck and you have no job and hopefully you can work with them again to get another job and so basically you're a freelancer or you're a contractor with someone that's helping you find jobs and but anyway I was working with them and I did a normal phone interview and then I I passed that and then they did like a screening interview and I had to do like technical screen on the phone. He asked me all these things about PHP, React, JavaScript, Ruby. Just my overall knowledge, like a technical screen of like, what would you do in this situation? 
to find this. Like, some of it was pretty hard, but I passed and I, they had one company for me to go to. They had one spot for me to go and interview at. And so I took it, of course, I didn't have a job. A job is a job, I need money to live, pay my bills. And so I went and I showed up, and that was the first time in my life where I was sitting against the wall. You ever seen in a movie, people sitting against the wall and they're all holding their resumes like this? That was the first time in my life that it ever, that's like ever happened to me. Normally companies are polite enough to not do that. It's like, it just makes things weird, you know? Normally companies will interview someone to come in, interview and then leave. And then maybe on the way out you'll see the next guy coming in, right? That seems more normal, more fair, but like we were all sitting up against the wall with our resumes and papers like this, looking at each other, all competing for what I think were like three slots that they had open. And so my turn came and I went in there and it was like some dude from the recruiting agency in there and the CEO and the CTO and some devs, right? And so the devs don't really respect me. They know, the devs know how it works, right? The, the recruiters are just trying to get me in there to get their money. Like the, you know, I was, I was interviewed number 11 of the day, right? And so they're just like this at that point in time during the day. And <laughs> they, they just didn't care. And so I'm doing the best I could and answering all the questions that they're asking me. Why do you want to work here? What technologies? We're using this. Would you want to do this? And the lady that's like at the door for the recruiting agency, keep in mind we're recruiting with like two other recruiting agencies. So there's like three recruiters all having like 11 people lined up to work at one company for three slots. I finish and the lady's like, yeah, you definitely placed top three. And I was like, sweet, fantastic. And they're like, yeah, they hired the first person, the guy at the top, but you know, we're still waiting to hear back uh, for you two with me and whoever, whoever else was in like the top three. And so a couple weeks went by, literally the next day, the CEO was like, yeah, we hired a guy. I'm just gonna go to San Francisco to do some business stuff. I'll be back in a week. Literally nothing I can do for a week. I'm just waiting around and then Another week goes, it's like, yeah, we just haven't had time to look over any more resumes, right? Because the company knows that they're paying a surcharge just to hire someone from a recruiting agency so they have the ability to be like, yeah, it's not working out and just cut us off. And, and then another week goes by and the recruiting company sends like an agent there with donuts all dressed up in this fancy business suit. He like brings donuts to like butter the company up for, I don't know, he's like, so have you, are you thinking about hiring any of our, uh, you know, interviewees that we had a couple weeks ago and they totally just tell them no. And so they were hiring for three slots, company just changed their entire mind, they're only hiring one person and everyone just came down here and interviewed a whole bunch for no reason. And so then they're like, yeah, it looks like we're just gonna have to, uh, you know, get you another slot. And like, yeah, I, I, I see time out of my day to not practice my skills while I don't have a job to get better to go interview and, you know, they butter you up and they make, they tell you that you're gonna get the job and this is my fault, right, for putting my emotions into the future and anticipating stuff. I should have had abundance mentality, outcome independent. That way, when something like this happens, you don't get all depressed and you think like, oh man, it's me, it's all me. But anyways, that's it's Tony Robbins for you, so I digress a little bit, but I didn't, I didn't get the job. And so I kept applying, they're like, yeah, it looks like, you know, well, we're out of luck for now, we'll, we'll keep on the lookout for you. And I was like, okay. And so I got the job that I, I have now, and then, I don't know, three weeks into it, she calls me. She's like, hey, we just heard back. They're wanting to hire a couple of those people. Are you still interested? And I'm like, is it remote, full-time? And can it be fully autonomous? And does it pay 95000 a year? She's like, yeah, yeah, we, we can talk about all that. And like, so they just want to get you on the phone so that they can convince you to go interview for the thing. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm all right. Like, I didn't really want to go anyways, but I was just like making ridiculous demands because I was a little bit salty about it. But essentially that's how recruiters work. And so let me summarize the three different methods. You have contract to hire where you're working for the recruiter. They're paying you a salary and then taking a cut off the top, charging the company more. So you're paying, they're paying you 70, but charging the company 90,000 and they take that extra 20 for themselves. And then there is placements where the recruiter receives like a bounty reward of just a flat fee once they hire someone, but there's like a two week return period on you, the product for a refund if they don't like you, like if, if they fire you or whatever, which kind of sucks. And then there's recruiters that hire you on full time as a like contractor freelancer. And then in the meantime, when they don't, when they can't place you somewhere, you're like working for the contracting company, just getting paid to review your skills. Uh, those are few and far between. And I think that only happens when you like lose a job or a contract runs out. They don't hire you onto a position to just learn, right? They're not making money. They're not making money from that. So having said all that, having ranted a, a little bit, um, 
There are some websites that you can use to find some recruiter jobs, recruiters specifically. Let me show you. Okay. Okay, so the site that I use is actually called cybercoders.com. It's a site purely for recruiters. I've seen some pretty cool jobs on there. I get an email almost every single day. Today I got an email from a recruiter and saying thanks for applying and then, oh sorry, I typed your email in wrong. That was the first time that's ever happened, but usually just about every day I get an email from there. I haven't updated my resume in a very long time. There's other sites um, such as LinkedIn. You can enable currently open to recruiters. That's an option I'll show you. And then also on um, Stack Overflow, if you upload a resume there, you can say that you're open to recruiters. And on Indeed, you can also say that you're open to recruiters. So before we jump in, I just want to say thank you to the Martin Fee and Vlaslo for supporting the channel. I appreciate everything that you guys are doing for me and to all the other patrons. I appreciate you as well. Uh, everything helps. And uh, I have a Discord link for that's in the description below. Go ahead and get yourself a t-shirt. I got one. It's on the way. So you'll see me in that. But anyways, let me show you the websites. Anyways, let's start with LinkedIn. You want to go to LinkedIn.com and then you want to click on your little profile picture and then, you know, come here, scroll down a little bit. You'll see your dashboard private to you. Make sure you're logged in. Career interests. Let recruiters know you're open. Right now it's currently off. Like I said, I'm not really looking for anything, but status actively applying, blah, blah, blah. What types of jobs so people can come and they can look for you. But this is a good place to let people know that you're interested. Uh, there's really not much more to it than that. They kind of, you know, try to give you some filters since different recruiters do different things. Let's move on to Stack Overflow now. All right, so if you go to Stack Overflow and then you come over to the left and you click Jobs, you'll see this thing over here that says, are you actively looking for a job? If so, set your job search status to actively looking. We'll accelerate your matches. So again, you can do this, right? So not interested in jobs, save. Employers won't find you and then that's it. So if you want to message it again, you can come over here to Job Preferences and then you can do actively looking open but not actively looking preferred preferences you know some tech you want to work with so that recruiters can have some sort of criteria if they if they want to you know reach out to you so that's how stack overflow let's move on to indeed now all right so when you come to indeed go make an account sign in upload your resume and once you do that basically recruiters will come to you so you upload your resume and you'll probably get messages and then they'll send you an e or you'll get a push notification or an email saying that you have interest or there's someone interested in you for for a certain position for a certain duration or something like that I mean that's really all there is to it for here and then last but not least let's go to cyber coders again this is cyber coders go ahead and make an account Log in. alright so after you sign in this is the main page and you can just come over here just type in developer search and then let's just look at full stack developer posted today so you'll notice this is the recruiting position. If we go back and we just pick, I don't know, Django engineer in California is recruiting for this position and the positions below. So everyone on here is a recruiter and then they're recruiting for multiple positions. Again, how it works is you upload your resume. So come up here, go to profile. And then you post all your work history and you include your resume. So there's my resume there. They can grab it whenever they want. But how it works is you just apply to the jobs here and usually it'll take you through a couple steps. It'll ask you to rate yourself. So if I type react so I can just apply to one for you and just show you what it looks like. Pick something semi-relevant. React engineer, Santa Barbara, California. Fantastic. Uh, so she is recruiting for this position. So if you click apply, It'll ask you to rate yourself. Don't put yourself down here. Even if you never touched it, you know, don't don't put yourself at none. At least do skilled. Because by the time, you know, you could unless this is like some framework or something that you can't be skilled in, especially you know, like Kanban, you could you could be skilled in that in fifteen minutes. RESTful APIs, using APIs, you could be skilled in that within twenty minutes, just go watch a video on how to use APIs. Um, you just don't put none. Don't do yourself a disservice. These recruiters have an auto filter saying like if you don't meet, you know, at least two bars on this one, three bars on this one, you just get filtered out automatically. And so there's a couple pages like this on here 
that you have to go through and then you just click apply and if it's a match the recruiter will reach out to you and if it's not they may reach out to you and tell you no or they just might ghost you and you don't hear anything at all but those are my resources for recruiters and helping people come find you uh, if you're in this industry i'm sure you already know how recruiters are and they just you know whatever it takes just you know they're trying to make a living you know but if you like this video hit that little subscribe button click that bell make sure you get notified whenever i do this and uh thanks for watching <laughs>